Day in the life of a family nurse practitioner student. Good morning, it's approximately 9.17 a.m. I just got to clinical. I attend a state university here in Maryland and they do have a family nurse practitioner program that is full-time and you can also attend part-time. Currently, I'm attending full-time. I don't know what I'm thinking, but it is a lot because I am also working full-time. The program format is hybrid. Prior to COVID, most of the classes were online on campus. But since COVID, they are doing the in-person class via Zoom. So every Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I meet with my classmates, with the instructor who facilitates the course every Tuesday and Wednesdays. Now, this is my second semester. Last semester, I took health assessment and uh, pathophysiology. This semester, I am enrolled in pharmacology and primary care one. The primary care one course consists of clinical and theory. So right now I'm at the clinic. I was fortunate to find a preceptor that I did not have to pay for. He is a medical doctor who takes nurse practitioner students. I have 120 hours to complete. After today, I think I would be at 60 something hours, close to 70, but I'm hoping to complete all 120 before the end of April. That way I can use the last two weeks of the the first two weeks of May to like wrap up the semester strong because I do have a ton of other work like case studies, case logs to submit. So let's go ahead and head inside. I was gonna take the elevator, but I'm only going to the first floor. So I've made, I've set a goal to take the steps instead of taking the elevator. My birthday's tomorrow and I just wanna live a healthier life, a long life. So taking the steps will definitely be a thing from now. As soon as I get in, I change into my lab coat, put my stuff away because it is time for business. These patients are coming in nonstop. I think on the schedule today, we have maybe 23 patients. Half of them will be tele visits in the afternoon though. I'm grabbing my pen, I gotta have my water, and of course my stethoscope. Everything is electronic in the office, so every student and the physician, we each have a laptop that we plug all of the patient's information in, and that's how we look our patient's information up as well. Right now, I'm getting ready to see a patient. He's actually over in the lab getting his blood drawn, and once he comes in, I'll do his exam document everything in the system and move on to the next patient. The morning was busy. I think I saw, we had in the office already from when I got there at 9.30 and it's now two o'clock. I believe like 16 patients came through and I saw, I think maybe five of them. Yes, because I need five case logs. So one thing I'm going to do is definitely work up five patients some of them were like annual physicals. One of them had like abdominal pain. Another one was there for like some kind of lab follow-up. And now it's time for break. I made dinner last night. I actually baked a whole chicken, but I was running behind this morning. So I did not get to take any lunch. I didn't bring any lunch with me. I'm just gonna walk to the cafe and get a cup of coffee because remember, I don't want the itis kicking in. I have an avocado and I have an apple in my bag, which I'm going to eat once I get back to the clinic. It's nice to come outside. Clearly, I forgot about the avocado and the apple real quick because I looked at their menu and saw quesadillas and had to have one. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are familiar with the debacle of the nurse practitioner versus the medical doctor versus the physician assistant. In a lot of states throughout the U.S., a lot of nurse practitioners have a full practice authority, meaning that they can practice independently. They do not need a physician to oversee their care or their practice or whatever, have, what have you. And a lot of physicians are upset about it. And so are physician assistants, because what they're doing is they're comparing their course of education to that of a nurse. And what they're saying is that nurses do not have near half of the training that physicians and even physician assistants have to go through in order to become licensed to practice. Physicians assistants, by the way, they have to be supervised in all settings by a medical doctor, whereas in a lot of states, nurse practitioners can practice independently. 
they do not need to be supervised. So that's pretty upsetting. A lot of physicians have also said things like they went to, they did four years of college, four years of med school, three years of residency. And if they went on to specialize, they had to do more training, amassed all of the school loans. And here comes nurses who can go back to school for two, three, maybe four years max and get full practice authority. So that has caused a lot of controversy. And I definitely look at it from the view of a physician sometimes. Like I put myself in their shoes. Not that I would ever want to go to medical school because I just don't have that kind of discipline to do that. But I would definitely feel some kind of way too if I knew that I am a physician, spent all of this money going to school. You're welcome. Sure. And spent all of this money going to school and now nurses can practice and write prescriptions and see patients and own their own practices. As a nurse practitioner, yeah, I would be a little bit salty too. A lot of people say things like, don't hate the player, hate the game. The nurse practitioners aren't the ones that make the rules. Blame it on the state, but there's always this back and forth. I will definitely say though that there is a big difference in the education. I chose to go to a state university that has an actual brick and mortar that has a reputation. I did try one of the online schools and it did not work out for me. I'm the kind of person when it comes to education, I prefer to go to a school that has a reputation or that is known. That's just me personally. However, I do understand that some people choose to go to what's being referred to as a diploma mill school because of convenience. A lot of nurses work full time, have families, and they don't always have the time to sit in a classroom. For me, in order for me to learn and to actually retain information, I need to be in an environment of learning. I have to be in a classroom and be amongst others. Because to me, education is much more than a curriculum. And it's so much more than a curriculum that's just slapped online with a facilitate, facilitator who tells you, well, these assignments are due and yeah, turn it in by the due date. Like I like being with people to learn because I like the engagement. I like discussions. I like being able to hear other people's, listen to other people's opinion and also share mine. So that is the reason why I chose the program that I chose. Even though our classes are on Zoom, it's still a group of us that meet twice a week, two different classes. We meet twice a week and we engage in lecture and discussions and listen to each other's ideas and thoughts. I need that, not everyone does. Every once in a while, I get a ridiculous craving for a Coca-Cola, not very often. I keep these mini cans in the back of my car. They're in the trunk because let's say maybe once or twice a month, I crave. I don't know where it comes from. I just crave a Coke. So these right here are, they are 7.5 full ounces. So basically a cup, 90 calories. I'll drink this and it'll satisfy my craving for another few weeks. Don't judge me. I'm getting ready to head back in now because it's the afternoon and we have patients on telehealth. What I find being with the physician is that there's so much that I don't know and so much I need to learn. And what's unfortunate is that nurse practitioners, when we graduate, we are expected to jump right into practice. There isn't a residency or a fellowship for us to go through for further learning. And I really do think that's something the government needs to focus on. Like we need more learning because I'm still thinking like a nurse. It's so hard for me to convert my mind to that of a provider. So when the doctor asks me questions sometimes, he's like, no, 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 come on now. Okay, I need you to be smart, think smart. <laughs> and I'm just like, my brain is not wired like that. But let's go, off to telly. <laughs> All right, I've got my monthly fix of Coke. Let's get to these tele visits. I'm in one room, the physician is in another room, and what we do is we both sign in and see the patients. He asks me my thoughts, I tell him what I think, he asks me what diagnoses, and we come up with the plan together. It is now five o'clock, it's time for me to head out because I do have to head 
over to campus. I told you guys I have a test online and two of my classmates have to present, so I am leaving for the day. That was my day, it's over. I'm headed to campus. One of the things I realized today is that I actually enjoy women's health. One of the patients I had on televisit, she's a few weeks pregnant and she was um, following up for her lab, her lab work. And I really enjoyed talking to her, asking her about the baby and just how she's feeling. And I was kind of excited for her. I don't know what's going on, but I like that aspect. So who knows? Maybe I might, I just might go into women's health. I don't think that primary care for, is for me. I don't know. It's, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know what this degree is going to bring to me, but I'm open to learning. And I am just thankful that I do have a doctor that's willing to teach and he does not charge. Very thankful for that. I'm doing this rotation with him and I think I'm going to do my primary care too. Still at his office because I kind of know his style. I know the routine and he gets, he sees the population that I would need, which is age 65 and above. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching this video and I will catch up with you all in another video.